Today, in this video lecture, we are going to start with chapter 3, which is about linear transformations. In earlier lectures, we had dealt with chapter 2, which was by defining our vector spaces, then we defined subspaces, then we defined uh, basis and dimension, and as the fourth section, 2.4, we had seen coordinates. So, in order to define linear transformations, what we need basically is two vector spaces over the same field F. So, suppose you have a vector space V over the field F. Also, you have a vector space W over the field F. Okay. So, a linear transformation is a function T from V to W. So, basically it is a function from the vector space V to the vector space W. Note that both are having the same fields. Same fields. Okay. And this function should satisfy a particular property. The property is that T of C alpha plus beta is equal to C into T of alpha plus T of beta for every scalar C that is coming from the field F and for every vector alpha and beta coming from V. So, this is the definition of a linear transformation. So, why is the fact that both the vector space should have the same field is coming into picture is because here you have uh, alpha and beta coming from F. Definitely C alpha is in F. Beta is in uh, C alpha is in v, uh, C alpha is in V. Beta is in V. So C alpha plus beta will be in V. So this is an element totally co coming inside V. Okay. So that is okay. And on the right hand side, suppose if we define something like this. See, suppose if V is having the field F1 and W is having the field F2. And the same thing is taken. So here we have Suppose if the condition is being satisfied, if we are saying that it is satisfied. So on the right hand side, right hand side is the side which plays a role uh, in defining uh, or in uh, emphasizing that we need the same field. See on the right hand side, uh, you can see that uh, C is the scalar, but uh, and uh, T of alpha is necessarily inside W because alpha is in V. So, T of alpha will be in W and T of beta will be in W. We know that element. But this C was taken from F, from F1. Okay, here because here in order to define C alpha, we need C to be inside F1. But this C necessarily need not be in F2 that is that is a that is a completely different field and uh, there is only one possibility one possibility is that F2 is a subset of F1 if this is the if this condition is satisfied uh, we can say that uh, it is okay otherwise we cannot define the function from V to W over different fields such that this condition is generally satisfied. So that's why we are emphasizing that uh, both vector fields V and W should have the same fields. Okay, so we will see the first example. Example says if V is any vector space, the identity transformation I 
defined by I of alpha is equal to alpha. Here they are not using the braces inside the, this textbook. So you can uh, even write like that I alpha or I of alpha. You can. Yes, you can write like this as well as like this. Okay, phi of alpha is equal to alpha is a linear transformation from V to V. So they are saying that the identity transformation from V to V such that I of V is equal to V for every V belongs to V is a linear transformation. Uh, you can check out whether this satisfies the property we just talked about. This property. Okay. So uh, that is trivially satisfied. And similarly, the zero transformation from V to V such that zero of V is equal to the number zero for F. This, this zero is what? The Additive identity with respect to the addition defined inside V. The zero. This is the function. This is the function. This is the additive identity zero for every V belongs to V. Okay, that is also a linear transformation trivial from V to V. Now the next example is suppose if F is a field and V is the space of polynomial functions F from capital F into capital F given by uh, a polynomial is usually notated like this, uh, call it f of x. Okay, uh, and the transformation is D. D is the transformation which is said here. D is from uh, the set of all polynomial functions Functions uh, into V. Okay, defined like this. Uh, there is a slight change there. Let V be the space of polynomial functions. Uh, uh, yes, so V be the set of polynomial functions uh, from uh, F to F. So V is defined. So uh, we have a general function. Uh, D is a linear transformation from V to V such that how is D defined? D of f of x is equal to is actually the di uh, differentiation differentiation of the polynomial. So you get uh, c1 plus uh, 2c2x plus etc plus uh, k c k x raised to k minus 1 for uh, where this f of x is an arbitrary polynomial coming from V. Uh, you can check out that uh, this d, the function d is satisfying uh, the condition which we mentioned here. So what should you do? You should take uh, one polynomial f1 of x, another polynomial f2 of x. Okay, This f1 of x is not, uh, just call it uh, maybe uh, c1 you can call it okay uh, call it c0 plus c1x plus etc plus ck x raised to k and for f2x call it d0 plus d1x plus etc plus d dl x raised to l okay then uh, prove that Yeah, the field is F. Okay, so if C belongs to F, you have to prove uh, C D of C in C into F one of X plus F two of X. So you have to prove this. Prove that D into C one. D of C into F1 of X plus F2 of X is equal to C into D of F1 
of x plus d of f2 of x. This is what you have to prove. That is very simple. You can uh, easily prove it out. Now, example 3 says that suppose if A is a fixed M by N matrix, we are fixing an M by N matrix, entries are coming from the field F. So, we are defining a function uh, T from the set of all matrices of order So, you have uh, of order n by 1. Of order uh, n by 1 to set of all matrices of order m by n m by 1 okay uh, from set of all matrices of order n by 1 to the set of all matrices of, of order m by 1 so this is a transformation just define like this t of x is equal to a into x where a is already fixed as we said in the in the first okay a is fixed so this x is being changed for every x belongs to the set of all matrices of order n by 1 so you have to show that this is a linear transformation how to show it uh, show that t of uh, some say c into a plus b is equal to c into t of a plus t of b where uh, this a and b are matrices coming from uh, f n cross m n cross 1 okay so you can easily prove that show the condition show this condition and then example 4 suppose if uh, p is a fixed m by m matrix with entries coming from f and q be a fixed n by n matrix over f uh, define a function so here in example 4 the function is from m cross n into itself into it itself f m cross n it is defined as uh, already this uh, it is defined as t of a is equal to p a q where q and uh, p are fixed where p is an m by m matrix q is an n by n matrix so a is m by n okay this p and q are fixed and we are varying a fine Okay, uh, so uh, you have to prove that T is a linear tra transformation. You can see that T of uh, C A plus B where A and B are uh, M by N matrices. C is a scalar coming from F. So that is equal to P into C A plus B Q. That is equal to C P A plus P A Q, uh, P B Q. That is equal to C P A Q plus P B Q which is equal to c into t of a plus t of b. Uh, this happens because uh, uh, matrix addition and multiplication are distributed uh, among themselves. So, you can easily prove that. So, that was example 4 and example 5 says that suppose if r is the field of real numbers and v is the space of all functions. So, v makes the, states the set of all functions from r to r. Uh, such that uh, f is continuous set of all continuous functions are taken and uh, t is defined from v to v such that uh, t of f of x is defined to be integral from 0 to x f of t dt this one okay so you have to show that t is a linear transformation so how to do it show that t of some c into f of x plus t of x is equal to c t into f of x plus t of t, t of f of x 
plus t of g of x. Show that. Show this out. Substitute the definition. And you can uh, see that that is also a linear transformation. Um, the function t of f is uh, this, the integral is actually not only continuous, it is also uh, having a continuous uh, first derivative. So uh, this happens uh, because integral uh, integral sign, the integration is always linear. So this will uh, obviously happen. Now another property of linear transformation from V to W is that T of 0 is equal to 0. Uh, this is because uh, T of 0 can be written as, so that is equal to T of 0 plus 0 because this is the identity element. And since uh, this is linear transformation, you can write this as T of 0 plus T of 0. So what you now got is, uh, uh, this T of 0 is inside W, right? So T of 0 is equal to T of 0 plus T of 0. That means T of 0 has to be the identity element, uh, the additive identity. So you will get T of 0 is equal to 0. So this uh, linear transformation from V to V uh, can be treated as a particular type of real valued function on real R. Okay. So the word linear is coming. So you can have a better picture by reading this paragraph. Uh, always linear uh, will, the function linear will mean that it is a, a graph associated to a straight line. So linear transformation to R1 to R1 according to our definition. T from R to R uh, is a function uh, T of uh, Cx plus Y is equal to C into T of X plus uh, T of Y. So this, this condition satisfied. So it is actually a function such that uh, The graph is a straight line passing through the origin. Why it is passing through the origin? Because t of 0 is equal to 0. So that is a particular case of linear transformation. You can uh, see a real value function uh, being uh, a linear transformation like that. And also uh, if uh, we, have, we are having uh, n vectors alpha 1 etc alpha n by induction uh, we can say that T of C1 alpha 1 plus etc plus Cn alpha n is equal to C1 into T of alpha 1 plus etc plus Cn into T of alpha n. Uh, so this follows readily from the definition. And also uh, we can get T of C1 alpha 1 plus C2 alpha 2 is equal to C1 into T of alpha 1 plus T of C2 alpha 2 which is equal to C1 into T of alpha 1 plus C2 into T alpha 2. Uh, from this, uh, this is an example of how we can just use linear, the condition of linear transformation. And we will uh, prove theorem 1 and uh, wind up our video. Uh, suppose you are having uh, the statement to be, suppose V is a finite dimensional vector space over the field F. And uh, suppose uh, alpha 1, etc., alpha n is an ordered basis for V. That means this basis is having a specific order. The first element is alpha 1, second element is alpha 2, and so on. Nth element is alpha n. Let W be a vector space over the same field F. Okay. Let beta 1, beta 2, etc., beta n be any arbitrary vector in W. Then there is precisely one linear transformation precisely one linear transformation t from v to w such that t of alpha j is equal to beta j. So in v you are having uh, the basis to be alpha 1, alpha 2, etc, alpha n and uh, we are having inside this uh, v you are having the w. Okay, this is W, this is V and inside W we are said to have beta 1, beta 2, etc, beta n and uh, actually these are bases and these are uh, just any arbitrary vector. 
So we are saying that uh, there exists exactly one transformation such that alpha 1 is mapped to beta 1, alpha 2 is mapped to beta 2, etc. Alpha m is mapped to beta n. So in order to prove that, in order to prove that there is some linear transformation t which maps t of alpha i to beta j. Uh, suppose if alpha is any arbitrary vector in V, uh, that means uh, since alpha is in V and set B alpha 1 etc. alpha n is a basis, this alpha can be written as a linear combination of those basis elements. And suppose if the coefficients are x1 etc. xn, so alpha is equal to x1 alpha 1 plus etc. plus xn alpha n, say. Suppose we are assuming so. So, uh, for this vector, we are defining T of alpha to be x1 beta 1 plus x extra plus xn beta n. Okay. We are defining like that. And uh, this is well defined because this x1, x extra, xn are unique. As we said in the section coordinates, we know that uh, for any alpha, there is a unique representation for alpha when we are writing it as a linear combination of the basis elements. So this x1, x extra, xn are unique. So uh, this definition is a well-defined one. Okay. Now uh, we know that uh, T of alpha 1 will be equal to beta 1 from the definition. Why? Because T of alpha 1 is equal to alpha 1. No. Uh, because uh, because it is like this. This you can see alpha one is equal to one into alpha one plus zero into alpha two plus etc plus zero into alpha n. This is the only possibility for alpha one. So by the definition of what we defined here, we get T of alpha one is nothing but one into beta one. Okay. Similarly, alpha two is equal to zero into alpha one plus 1 into alpha 2 plus x extra plus 0 into alpha n. So you get T of alpha 2 is equal to uh, yes, 0 into beta 1 plus 1 into beta 2 plus x extra plus 0 into beta n. So you get that is equal to beta 2. So in general you get there T alpha T of alpha i alpha j is equal to beta j for every j is equal to 1 to n. Now Suppose if beta is an element in V, so uh, beta can be written as a linear combination of the basis elements, right? So let y1, etc., yn be the corresponding coefficients. So beta can be written as y1 alpha 1 plus etc. plus yn alpha n. Uh, now consider the combination C alpha plus beta. Okay, you know alpha is the term sitting here and beta is the term sitting here. So just substitute them. And uh, when you simplify, you get C x1 plus y1 alpha 1 plus etc. plus C xn plus yn alpha n. It's a corresponding expansion in the right hand side of C alpha plus beta. Now apply T on the C alpha plus beta. So you, by the definition sitting here, you get uh, here uh, x1 etc xn where the coefficients of alpha right when when we are making them uh, into the linear combination of alpha 1 etc alpha n. so here you have the coefficients to be c x1 plus y1 etc c xn plus y n so you multiply each of the coefficients uh, with uh, beta 1 etc beta n simultaneously and add so you get the term sitting here so you got t c t of c alpha plus beta now consider C into T of alpha plus T of beta. So that is equal to C of x1 beta 1 plus x2 beta 2 plus etc plus xn beta n plus y1 
beta 1 plus y2 beta 2 plus etc yn beta n and when you uh, simplify you get that is equal to uh, cx1 plus y1 beta 1 plus cx2 plus y2 beta 2 plus etc plus cx n plus yn beta n. So, in the summation form it will be like this uh, and this will imply t of c alpha plus beta and c uh, t of c alpha plus beta and c into t of alpha plus t of beta is are the same. So, you get this and you have to prove that this is the only linear transformation like that. So, suppose if there exists another linear transformation u from v to w such that u of alpha j's are mapping uh, to beta j's for 1 to n. Then take, uh, then take an alpha belongs to v where alpha is the uh, linear combination of alpha 1 etc alpha n like this the coefficients are x1 etc xn consider u of alpha u being a linear transformation you get that is equal to u of uh, x1 alpha x1 alpha 1 you can expand and see this is nothing but uh, u of x1 alpha 1 plus x2 alpha 2 plus etc plus xn alpha n right so, since u is a linear combination and x1, x2, etc, xn are coefficients, you can take them out and get like this, x1 into u of alpha 1 plus x2 into u of alpha 2 plus etc plus xn into u of alpha n. And that is nothing but x1 into u of alpha 1 is beta 1, it is of this plus x2 beta 2 plus etc plus xn beta n which is written in the summation form like this and uh, that is nothing but what we defined earlier that is t of alpha so that means uh, u is identically equal to t so there exists only one such linear transformation uh, t which maps each of the basis elements to the set of n elements uh, inside W. So, please uh, go through the examples and uh, also solve question number one in the exercise session and uh, be familiar with uh, how we can define a linear transformation over the vector spaces uh, having the same field. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video lecture.